Shattering the Silence, also known as Not in My Family, is a 1993 film directed by Linda Otto. This is written by Michael Love, Martin Salinas and Joe Cacassi and we have a cast including Joanna Kearns as Veronica. And Veronica has recently had a baby and she starts to have memories of something that happened to her when she was a child, something involving her father. And I won't talk too much about that, but I'm sure you can work out what I'm talking about. And obviously this means that this film is dealing with a very sensitive topic about abuse. And it's not an easy watch, but for the most part, I think it's very well done. There is one thing that I really hated, but it is a spoiler, so I'll talk about it at the end. But other than that, I think they handle the topic in a way that's very sensitive, very believable. The memories coming back to Veronica are slow to begin with, but then I'd say relatively quickly she begins to realise what it was that she'd blocked out. And just the idea, and it does happen, but the idea that a person can suffer so much as a child and they kind of mentally block it out and they forget about it. The fact that anybody could have suffered something so horrific and then they can't even remember it. It's such a scary concept. And as I said, it does happen. It's the way of the mind's protecting itself. And we see reactions from other people in Veronica's life as she talks to them about this. And different people have very different reactions about the abuse she suffered at the hands of her father. And... It goes one step further than that and makes it even more dramatic and suspenseful. But I don't want to say how. I don't want to give away too much. But it's definitely, for the most part, a well-written narrative. Very believable with regards to Veronica as a character and how she was responding to these memories as they begin to surface. And unfortunately, I think some of the reactions from people in her life are also probably quite believable as well. And I think it does a generally a really good job of handling this kind of sensitive topic. It doesn't sugarcoat things, but it's not it's not overly graphic in the detail. So if you are not comfortable with this kind of topic when it goes into too much graphic detail, I'd say that's absolutely fine. It doesn't go into too much detail. But at the same time, it makes it very clear what is being spoken about. And I think it does a really good job with it. And if it sounds like your kind of film, then I'd say it's worth watching. I think it does a really good job, for the most part, of handling this this very sensitive topic. And obviously anything that raises awareness for childhood abuse is always going to be a good thing because I don't think it would be possible to have too much awareness. The performances are really great, really solid performances. The characters are very well written and the narrative is generally very well done. But I will now explain the one thing that I really didn't like. So this is a huge spoiler for something that happens right at the end. And the thing that I didn't like is, quite simply, the ending. And I will explain now why that is. So these are huge spoilers. On the one hand, we have a positive ending. Because throughout the film, Veronica had been unable to breastfeed and it was something she was struggling with. And at the very end of the film, we see her trying breastfeeding again and it seems to actually work this time. And of course, the message there is that because she's finally been able to let go of a lot of this burden, a burden she didn't even necessarily know she was carrying for a long time, because she was able to start to work through this, it was able to relieve some of that tension and it was able to help her with breastfeeding. But the thing I didn't like is that we don't get to see the prosecution. We don't get to see her father being prosecuted. We don't get that satisfaction. And I think with this kind of film, where they're really frustrating, particularly towards her mother, her mother is not necessarily worse than her father, but just as bad. Her mother is a nasty, nasty person. Her father is, of course, significantly worse. And in terms of needing this to be a satisfying experience, I needed to see the justice. And there's no guarantee that he'd be prosecuted. If there's not enough evidence, it's never a guarantee, which is obviously so terrible and so messed up. And as a viewer, I never got that satisfaction of seeing him being prosecuted, of seeing the justice. And I feel like that was a huge disappointment with the film because now I'm just left frustrated. For all we know, he's gotten away with it.
because we don't get that satisfaction of, of seeing that ending. So I think that that was a bad, bad decision. I think that was a mistake to not give us that satisfaction as viewers. Instead, we're left wondering, well, maybe he'd get away with it. And maybe he does. Who knows? Hopefully not. But we don't get that satisfying ending. So I think that was a, a bad move. But I guess one could argue, even if he didn't get sent down for a very long time, as he should do, the people who he abused were at least starting to make positive steps to try and heal from it. That's still not justice. But one could argue it's it's more positive than not, I guess. But I didn't love that. Other than that, though, Not In My Family or Shattering the Silence is definitely a, a good film. I think for the most part, they did a good job with the story. Very convincing, very powerful messages, very well-written characters and great performances. Not perfect, but in general, I'd say it's one that's worth watching. 